Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm starting a new reading vlog. This time around, I'm going to be reading Booktuber's Worst Books of 2023. I hope you're not exhausted by 2023 content. I know that mine's coming a little bit late, but like, I'm sorry, I'm always late to the party, I just can't help myself. I've done this video a few times in the past and I always really enjoy it. Typically, I select the booktubers that I'm going to be reading from, but this time around, I went over on my community tab here on YouTube and asked you guys to submit booktubers where you'd like to see me read their worst books and their best books from 2023. I collected all the booktubers and placed them in this mug, or rather, their names. I didn't, like, collect the book... Oh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, I put the booktubers' names in here. I'm going to be drawing at random. I'll be picking three booktubers throughout this video and reading one of their worst books from 2023. Let's go ahead and pick our first one. I'm kind of nervous for some reason. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> the booktuber is Gabby Reads. Okay, okay. That's actually really exciting because I feel like Gabby reads a lot of genres that I've been like wanting to get into from thrillers to horror, even though I'm going to be reading from her worst books list. So maybe this isn't the best place to get a recommendation from, but that's okay. It'll still get me to read something outside of my comfort zone. I'm hoping to find a book within her list that I already own or a book that I can get from the library because your boy's on a book buying ban and I'm going strong with it still so hopefully I can find something that I either own or that my library has. I'm gonna go watch her video and then I will come back and let you know my selection. Okay, so I went through Gabby's list. I did not actually watch the video because I'm gonna wait to watch it till after I've read the book that I selected, just because I don't wanna go in knowing her thoughts. I wanna go in with a clean slate and just like approach the book without any expectations, or try not to approach it with any expectations, because it's kind of hard to approach a book without any expectations when you know it's on somebody's worst books list, but I just kind of want to go into it not knowing much. The book that I selected from her list is not one that I own. I did not own any of the books on her list, which is okay, it's fine. This book in particular sounded like something that I would enjoy, and my library has it, so I decided to go with it. The book in question is The Night House by Joe Nesbo. In it, we are following this kid who's kind of had a bit of tragedy sort of like plague his life, one, his parents died in a house fire, and two, he has to go and live with his aunt and uncle, and he's got to go to a new school, and at this new school, he becomes a bit of an outcast, and somebody in his class ends up going missing, and everybody's like, well, it's got to be the new kid that's behind it, he's the one that did it, and the new kid is like, no, but I do know the truth, and the truth it sounds so absurd, which is partly kind of like why I want to read this book, because I'm intrigued by this element. Tom, our main character, is insistent on the fact that the boy that went missing got sucked into a phone in a telephone booth. Like, that sounds so absurd, and I need to know more. I need to know what happens next. So, so this is going to be the book from Gabby's List that I read. I'm super intrigued. I'm super excited about it. We're going to be going on a bit of a field trip to the library in order to check this book out, which I'm super excited about. I visited my library this year more than I ever have before, and that excites me so much. I also just, like, have been loving the library because I've been finding really interesting and new books, and I also just, like, get the itch to read when I'm at the library. So I'm super excited about that. It is Friday. I don't really have have any plans this weekend. I'm gonna be like planning some videos and filming some videos, but regardless of what happens, I will bring you guys along with me. Let's go. Update time. I've gotten to chapter 15 and this book is a mess so far, which makes me really sad because I feel like there was a lot of potential here. There's a lot of like really interesting ideas that are being brought up but just like never being explored. And I feel like the plot is falling into this like very like lulling about kind of place where we're just like not really doing much. And I will expand on that in a second. Something that I want to point out though is that this book feels very dated. And if this book like came out in like the 80s or like the 70s or something like that, like I think I would be able to like over overlooked that a little bit because obviously the times are different. Does that make it right? Absolutely not, but it's still just like a sign of the times. But this book came out in 2023, so I can't really like overlook these outdated things that are being brought up. There's some fat phobia within this book and then like sprinkles of misogyny. And yes, I have receipts. I did not come without the receipts. I've got them for you. I was going to ask you if you could help me find this emu guy, but then I realized it probably isn't a girl thing. Probably isn't a girl thing? What about that involves gender at all? On the one hand, Fatso, yes, there is a character in here nicknamed Fatso, was a nerd who liked girly stuff, dressing up as a girl whenever a carnival or a school play gave him the opportunity, and mostly hung out with girls. I had expected him to freak out as soon as he heard that this was going to require a bit more masculine courage. <sighs> this is like just, there's just, uh, huh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you catch my drift here? Like, there's just like so many like little sprinkles of that throughout this book that just like every time it pops up, I get 
so frustrated. It's so annoying. There are a lot of like really cool creepy elements that are being brought up. Like there's this bug element that had me itching. Something was crawling up my pant leg and I looked down. More insects. They looked like they were coming straight out of the ground, like the living dead rising from the grave, crawling on skinny insect legs with eyes that glinted red. Like yes, that did creep me out. Like it brings out the creepy crawlies. It has you wanting to itch, itch, itch. It's filled with all these like really eerie and creepy visuals and I think had this book been kind of paired with a stronger plot, it would have been a banger. But the plot itself is falling flat, and I think it's in part due to the fact that like the main character is taken to a place. I'm like tiptoeing through spoilers here, I don't want to mention exactly where he's taken, but it kind of takes him out of the main storyline. Like there's a mystery that him and his friends are trying to solve, but he is taken away from that mystery, and so we've got the side character who is the one kind of like spearheading this mystery and like trying to track down clues, and we're only being told little bits of information here and there because our main character is away from the side character and he is taken away for a reason like there is a reveal at this place that he has taken <laughs> i hate spoilers like i wish i could just be like this is what's happening but i can't um so like there is a reason why he's being taken there but like i don't think that that's how things should have gone down like i think that that was such a hindrance to the plot like i feel like that reveal could have happened in a different way like there was <laughs> Frustration. I'm in this boat where I feel like things are a bit on the underbaked side when it comes to this book. Like, it feels like there are a lot of ingredients that were just kind of like thrown together and it wasn't mixed well, it wasn't baked long enough, and this is the result of that. It needed more time, more fleshing out, more care, and I'm not in a position where I feel like I'm gonna DNF the book. I'm not having the worst time ever while reading it. Like, it's a very easy read, and like, again, the visuals are really cool, the tone of the story is somewhat nice, but I just do not foresee myself heading in a place where I'm going to leave this book with it being a five-star rating per se. Like, I very much so feel in the middle. I feel like the second half of the book has to come in swinging and be amazing for me to give it above a two-star rating. So we will see where I land with this one. I will keep you guys updated. I had plans to get out today, go out in the world and do things, but it snowed, so I am being forced against my will to stay inside and read all day? Like, heaven forbid? Hate that for me? Not. I love that for me. No, but I did need to go out into the world today, so it's unfortunate that I'm having to stay home, but at the same time, I'm not mad at it, even though I hate snow. We've talked about this before. We've talked about this way too many times, honestly. I'm definitely going to be finishing this book today, so I will keep you guys updated on my thoughts once I reach the end. <laughs> Sad to report, I just finished, and it's not good. I'm with Gabby on this one. I got her back. This is not a good book, in my opinion, my personal opinion. If you loved it, I'm glad you loved it. I personally, no. No, no, no. It's going to show up on my worst books of 2024 list. I haven't watched Gabby's video yet. I am going to do that in a second and compare our thoughts. But I'm going to wrap up my own review here first before we get to that. Let me just say one positive because I do have one positive. There were some really nice scenes sprinkled throughout here that were really tense and like really just like had my attention, had me suited. And had this book had more of that, I think it would have excelled. But it turns into something so 
unexpected. It almost in some ways like doesn't feel like a horror novel. I get why it's being categorized as a horror novel because obviously like horrific things happen throughout the novel and there's lots of like weird supernatural things that happen but even still it felt like there were so many moments where it just like shedded its horror novelness. It turns out that this book is written in three parts which I didn't know that going in and each part honestly feels like its own story but part two and part three come in so late to the book. The first part takes up a majority of the book and then the second part is like a 15 year time jump it almost falls into this like meta place. I am gonna give like a loose spoiler for part two so if you're not into that just skip forward like 15 seconds. But the main character in part two ends up becoming an author and he wrote a book called The Night House so in that way it's like very meta. Part two tries to go in a dark direction. It feels like it is trying to like maintain its horror image but it's just like so silly and so goofy and it's just like hard to take seriously. This is no shade to Goosebumps but it feels like Goosebumps with adult characters. Characters. Truth be told, Goosebumps is way better than whatever this is, this mess. Then part three comes in and tries to be like, let's make sense of everything, and it's like, bestie, too little too late. We are not going to fix this. Anyway, respectfully, this book was a disaster. I think truthfully, I will give this book like a 1.5 star rating. That's where I'm at with it. I'm gonna watch Gabby's video now and then come back and compare our thoughts. And we're back. The first thing that Gabby talks about is the fact that she loves this cover, which I must say, same. It's so sad that this book is so terrible because I love this book cover. I was low-key like hoping like, ooh, maybe I'll love this book and then I will be able to buy my own copy and have this beautiful book cover on my bookshelf. But like, thank God I got this book from the library because as soon as this video is over, oh, it is going back to the library. Get it out of here. Next, she thought that the main character was annoying. Same. Especially in that first part. For me, in my opinion, he did get better in the second part and in the third part. But the thing is, part one is like a majority of the book, so even when you get to part two and part three, it's hard to forget who he was in part one. And finally, she felt like the writing was weak and boring. For the most part, I do agree with this fact, but for me, it did have like really excellent moments, really excellent scenes that felt really intense and really gripping. But then outside of those scenes, I do agree with the fact that like the book just kind of falls into a flat place. It appears that Gabby and I definitely had similar feelings when it comes to this book. I am glad to be done with it and move on to the next. <laughs> it's time to pick the next booktuber for this project. Let's go. Who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, we've got Tia Chu. This is a new to me booktuber. I actually subscribed to them when one of you guys recommended them to me in the community post that I originally posted. I'm actually super excited about this because I'll get to know somebody by reading their worst book. Albeit, I wish I was reading one of her favorite books. I wish I had picked her for the best books video that will be coming soon. I'll still be able to get to know a little bit about her and her taste through reading one of her worst books, so I'm not too mad at this. I'm gonna watch her worst books of 2023 video and I will report back with which book I have chosen. Well, I watched her video and she had a book that I really enjoyed from last year on her list, but that's okay. To each their own, you know. The Dead Romantics was a banger to me, but to each their own, it's all good. No hard feelings. Or a little hard feelings. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. It's fine. I went through her list and my library does not have physical copies available for any of them, which is very upsetting, but they do have the audiobook available for Once More with Feelings. So even though they don't have the physical copy available, at least I won't have to like get out and go to the library. I can just immediately download the audiobook. Boom. Just like that. God, I love the library. I hope the audiobook is solid. I will say that. I'm going to begin reading and listening to this and I will keep you guys updated on the journey. Let's go. I'm halfway into Once More with a Feeling and even though I wish I had the physical book to like read with while I'm listening to the book. It's still been nice to be able to like multitask and like get some things done while I'm listening to it. So I've been doing like the laundry, I've been doing the dishes. I've also been like listening to it as I've been driving around. I will say though, so far I don't have like the most positive thoughts surrounding this book. It's interesting because this book is an adult romance book, but the characters very much so read like young adult protagonists. A lot of elements within the story feel very juvenile to me, even though there is like adult themes coming in and like adult like topics are like woven through the story. So like in some ways it does feel like an adult novel when those things come in, but for the most part it feels like I'm reading a YA book, which is not bad necessarily. Like I love a good YA moment, but I think because this book is an adult romance, it's marketed as an adult romance that I just like, I was expecting it to feel like an adult book and it's just not feeling like that so far. It just feels very 
YA. I realized that I forgot to even mention what this book is about, so let me tell you a little bit about this book. And yeah, we were following Kathleen, who at one point was a big pop star, but now she has kind of like left that behind and she is in the Broadway field and she is being paired up with somebody that she had a bit of a fling with, this guy named Cal, who was a part of a big boy group and they don't have the best history and so Kathleen is a little bit frustrated when she finds out that he is going to be her Broadway director. Which let me just say, I didn't know anything about this book before going into it. I just like completely dove in, so I'm finding out all of this in real time as I'm reading the book. It's very much so falling into like a second chance romance, which I really like the idea of like second chance romances. And I feel like that being a trope is like very fitting to the story because both Kathleen and Cal talk about the past a lot. It's a very easy read and I'm enjoying my time with it. Um, I will say, and I don't mean any disrespect in saying this, but it feels like fan fiction. I know that there's a lot of like really well written fan fiction out there and I don't ever want to like degrade people for reading fan fiction because I think it's great, but it very much so reads like a trashy fan fiction. That's what I will say. I feel like trashy is not the best word either, but like that's the word I'm going to use. Trashy fan fiction. I'm not having like the time of my life reading this book, but it's also like a very easy read. It's like light and fun. So I'm committed to it at this point. I'm not going to like DNF it or ditch it or anything. I'm going to stick it out to see where things go and I will report back. I got some fun Japanese candy that I want to try out on camera. We got this peach gummy candy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we got this watermelon gummy candy. I was actually trying to track down this like viral candy that I saw on TikTok today, but uh, I could not find it anywhere and that's because it's probably sold out everywhere because everybody ever is getting it, but it's like the mango candy where you can like peel the outer layer of the mango and eat it. I don't know. I'm just like so fascinated. I want to try it. It's probably not even that good, but I still want to try it. I'm still curious. I love candy. I'm a big gummy candy person, so that's why I wanted to try it, but let's start with the watermelon. I'm a big watermelon boy, so let's give it a shot. It smells very watermelon-y. Ooh, they're pretty looking. They look like this. All right, here we go. Mmm, whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's is that a good woe? Is it a bad woe? Um, it's a woe where it's like the flavor is very subtle when you first bite into it and then it becomes consuming and consumes your mouth. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. How inappropriate of me. I feel like the peach one's gonna be the same way. Let's see. Get a sniff first. Smells like peach. Oh, that smells like real peach, not like fake peach. Like not artificial peach, real peach. Mmm. Okay. The peach one's nice. I'm happy. I'm definitely gonna be finishing my audiobook for Once More with a Feeling today, so I will update you guys later with my thoughts. So finished my ugly succulent Lego knockoff. I thought it was gonna be a cute little succulent. There were so many cute succulent options and I ended up with this. I want a refund. It's just not a cutie patootie. I wanted a cutie patootie and I got this. Here's the thing, this was a very easy listen. The book itself is rather entertaining in my opinion. I can't really be mad at the time spent with it and I'm not like sitting here raging over it. Like it didn't make me mad per se. I had a good time. The question here is though, is it a good book? In my opinion, no. And there's a lot of layers to this. One of the main aspects is just the characters themselves and the characters' personalities, sometimes the lack of personalities, sometimes just not good personalities. Kathleen, our main character, she's kind of awful. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Kathleen, I'm, and I get it, she's been through a lot, and I'm sure being a pop star celebrity is not all that it's caked up to be. I get it. But she was annoying to read from sometimes. She's a character that's just, like, very into herself, which I guess is, like, very fitting for, like, a celebrity. Like, I feel like a lot of celebrities, a lot of, like, pop stars, a lot of actors, I'm sure that they're, like, really into themselves because they are surrounded by people that are constantly, like, being, like, you're the best, you're amazing, you're the most powerful human on the earth. 
birth. And so like, I understand why her character was that way. Like it's very fitting and I'm not going to discredit that, but she's also just like not a great person. Like she's kind of terrible to one of her friends. Um, I did like the fact that we got to go into the past and kind of take a peek at the character's backgrounds and seeing just what they were like back then and like the scandal and how it affected everything and how it affected their careers. And I also really liked the theater and Broadway aspect of the story. I really enjoyed that kind of environment. The romance I felt nothing for, like absolutely nothing for. I think you're supposed to buy into this like push and pull situation, but I, I just didn't. It doesn't do a good job of kind of selling you on the push of the relationship. Like I never had any sort of concern that the couple wasn't going to end up together. But I also like didn't feel strongly enough to care if they were going to end up together or if they weren't gonna end up together. But I just feel like I wasn't sold on the pushing. I saw the pull. I saw them like pulling towards each other. And I always saw them ending up together in the end. And I just, I don't know. I just wish there would have been more tension, more believability when it came to like the pushing away of the relationship. Then my other problem with this book is that again, it just felt like a YA book. It just felt like a YA book, but it had some like adult moments sprinkled throughout it. The characters felt very young. They felt very juvenile and that was not fun. When you're going in expecting an adult book, you want the characters to feel like adults, not like YA characters. Like if I were to approach this as a YA book, I would believe that they are YA characters, but I'm approaching this book as an adult book because that's what it is. It's an adult romance and it's not giving adult characters at all. Now I'm gonna watch Tia's video and then I will come back and compare our thoughts. And I'm back. First up, she didn't love the second chance element. She didn't feel like it was done all that well. To that I say, fair. I mean, in general, I just like wasn't on board with the romance or the relationship. And then the other thing that she mentioned is that she didn't like that Kathleen was jeopardizing her best friend's lifelong dream. I feel that. She was such a questionable main character. And I know that like a part of that does make her story appealing because it kind of makes you want to keep reading because she is awful. <laughs> but I totally agree with you. There were just so many like elements to Kathleen's character that just had me side-eyeing her. Me and Tia are on the same page. We've got one more booktuber to go for this video. Let's see if my thoughts align with the next booktuber. It's time to pick our last booktuber for this video and find out what our last read is going to be. Let's do it. Why am I a little bit nervous? Oh, we got Gavin. Gavin reads it all. One of my all-time favorite channels. I'm super excited to read one of, well, Dang it, I keep forgetting that I'm not reading their favorite books. Like I'm reading their worst books. Like I get excited by the people that I chose and then I'm like, oh wait, that means I have to read their worst book, but it's fine. I'm gonna watch Gavin's video and I will report back with the book that I've chosen. I'm hoping that it's a book that I already own. I unfortunately do not own any of the books that Gavin talked about in his worst book, so 2023 video, but there was a book in his video that I've been intrigued to read and one that's a part of a series that I have been pretty good at keeping up with, but I haven't read this book in particular that he is talking about and that is Finn Lee Donovan jumps the gun and thankfully my library has it. It's in stock so I can go and grab that today and get started reading and see how I feel about it. Finley Donovan is a series that like I have really enjoyed. Like I really enjoyed the first book. I wouldn't say it's a perfect book by any means. Like there's a lot of issues with it and a lot of things that are just like a little bit unbelievable and you kind of have to suspend your disbelief but it was a fun time. It's like one of those murder mystery situations where it's like kind of lighthearted and fun but it feels weird that it's lighthearted and fun because there's like really intense things happening. I read the first two books. I really liked the first one. The second book I felt like didn't need to happen and I've honestly been considering if I should just like altogether ditch this series but I think I'm gonna wait to determine that after reading this third book. I can just see this series getting to a place where it just like drags on and on and on. For the first book there were moments in it that were unbelievable but the things that happen in the second book are even more unbelievable and it just feels like it didn't need to happen and I'm wondering if I'm gonna feel that same way about the third book. We will see. I have plans today to go and get my hair cut because this is an unruly mess and it needs to be dealt with so I'm excited about that. That, but also a little bit nervous. I feel like I always go into haircuts with a little bit of anxiety just because I've had so many like bad haircuts in the past or just like I've told the person cutting my hair what I want and they give me something different, which I know it's hard. I know it's hard to like deliver, but I've had some bad haircuts in my day. Hoping for the best on that front. I also need to run to the library to pick up the book, obviously. I need to go and get some party supplies because I'm celebrating my best friend's 30th birthday this weekend, which I'm super excited about. But for the most part today, I should be able to knock out the 
this book pretty easily. I feel like something that's really good about the Finley Donovan series is that it's very easy to read. Like, it's a very fun, lighthearted writing style. Again, which doesn't make that much sense because obviously lots of intense things happen in the books, but it still kind of maintains like a lighthearted feeling. I almost would put it in like the cozy mystery lane. Almost. I don't know if I would fully put it in there because there are some like thrilling moments. Let's get on with the day. to say. Well, I kind of do have things to say, but they're mostly not positive, which really sucks and makes me really sad. To be honest, though, I went into this knowing that I probably wasn't going to enjoy it because I didn't really enjoy book two and I didn't foresee it kind of going in a place where I would feel happy with it. So I think the series so far with each book has just like lost a little bit of magic. Like the first book, I really loved. I really loved how the events kind of came together and like how things unfolded and I just felt like it was a lot more believable than the rest of the books have been. Like book two became a little bit more unbelievable. Book three is wild and even more unbelievable at times. And the term of the first book is that while it is like a little bit on the unbelievable side of things, like it is kind of hard to like wrap your mind around the things that occur in that book actually happening. It's still a little bit believable and it makes sense that our main character would end up in the situation that she's in. This one just does not have the same pull as the first book and it's just not the same. It begs you, begs you to suspend your disbelief and just go along for the ride, but like, I just can't do that. And like, technically you do have to do that in book one. Like there are moments where you have to suspend your disbelief and just kind of go with it, ride along the ride, get on the ride and go. I can totally see why this ended up on Gavin's worst books of 2023 already. Like, it's so clear, it's so clear, but who knows, like maybe, the last chunk could come in swinging. You never know. I would love a plot twist moment where I leave this book being like, oh, it was good. I can see the future and I just don't foresee that happening. I got my hair cut earlier. I'm pretty happy with it. There's like stuff in it. I don't, I don't know what that stuff is called, like gel. I don't normally use that kind of stuff, but maybe I should because my hair is crazy, but I'm pretty happy with it as somebody who like often hates the way that their hair looks. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'll take it. I went and did a little reading at the park, but then I started to get swarmed by bugs and I was like, I'm not about this life. So I yeeted myself out of there. And then I went to the library. I've been to the library twice today. I went this morning to pick up Finley Donovan at one of the locations that's like way far away from my house. And then I went this afternoon after I went to the park because I had some returns that I needed to get back into the library. Books that I had picked up thinking that maybe there was a slim chance I could fit them in before they were due and it did not happen. Then I picked up some books that I placed on hold, which let me just be very clear, I have no reason to be checking more books out from the library because I don't have the time right now to be reading these books, but I still would like to read them. This one I think I actually could fit in because it's a graphic novel. Somebody corrected me on how I said this in a comment recently and I don't remember how to properly pronounce it. So I'm just gonna say how I pronounce it. Montag Twins, it might be Montag. Montagu? Anyway, this is like a Hardy Boys meets Supernatural moment, and I loved the first one, and I definitely want to check out the second one. And then I picked up Cursed by Marissa Meyer, because I read the first book, Gilded, and did not realize that it was a duology. When I uh, got closer to the end, I was like, oh, this is not over, is it? This is not over. There's still a lot of the story left, and sure enough, 
it's a duology. I'm definitely going to be finishing Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun today, so I will update you later with my final thoughts on it. <laughs> Finished Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and read the next book that comes out, despite the fact that this was such a lackluster read for me, and I did not enjoy it. Which I know sounds like so stupid, like why would I read the next book? But like, there's still something about these books that I find enjoyment with, whether it be like the writing style or the humor, there are still elements that shine through that still just like get me. Like even though I'm leaving this book and rating it literally a two out of five stars, I feel like I also said earlier that if this book sucks then I'm not gonna carry on with the series, but like here I am going back on my word, surprise, surprise. I don't know, there's just something about these books that they're just like so easy to get wrapped up in. The writing is accessible and really easy to fall into and I just feel like there's one more book coming out, I might as well read it. Now if it goes beyond four books, I'm done, I'm out, there's no way because these books are already as it is being dragged out. Like truthfully, this should have been a standalone situation. The first Finley Donovan book should have been a standalone. I think I truly mentioned all there is to mention about this book in my last update. The only thing that I really have to add is like the, the last few chapters were where things got really exciting. But it took the whole book to get there. And like to me, that's not how this book should have played out. It should have been exciting the whole way through and it just was not. It was very much so a filler book and also it was just dragging out a story that doesn't need to be dragged out. You have to suspend your disbelief to enjoy this. It falls into an incredibly unrealistic place that has me rolling my eyes. And again, the story is just being expanded in a way that it does not need to be expanded in. And yet I say all that, I critique this book and I'm planning on reading the fourth book. I mean, if I can get it at the library, then might as well, right? Right? I don't think that I'll be purchasing the rest of the series though because I just feel like it's not worth it. Like I'm not enjoying the books, I'm not gonna buy them. I'm gonna watch Gavin's video now and I'll come back and compare our thoughts. I'm happy to say that Gavin and I agree on this disaster of a book. One of his points is that the series is moving so far away from the first book that it's just like unrecognizable now and not in a good way, in a bad way. Like the way that it's being expanded is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I fully agree with that. I am full on board with that. Even though I will ride for the fact that I think the first book should have stayed a standalone, I still feel like there was a better route to go with it being expanded into a series. Like there were so many other options to make it a little bit more realistic and make it something that like makes sense, but the author doesn't do that. He says for him the humor wasn't as witty or sharp. I understand this perspective. I feel like I had a little bit of a different experience. Like I thought the humor was all right in this book. I will say that like, I look back on book one and book two and like book one had the best humor of them all. And there were some jokes in here that just felt like very dated. Like I remember there was like a Fifty Shades of Grey joke and I was just like, are we still making Fifty Shades of Grey jokes? He says that the scenarios are ridiculous. I agree fullheartedly, we've talked about this. The levels of absurdity that this book reaches unmatched. The last point that he has is that he felt like he was kind of falling out of love with the characters and I so freaking agree with this because like Finley Donovan herself like I felt like I really enjoyed her in the first book but now she's become like just such a flat character and I also do not like necessarily understand her appeal because she's got guys throwing at her like crazy and I'm like what about her is so like magnetic? I want to know. Can somebody tell me? Can somebody explain? Because like I just don't see it. But to each their own, I guess. We all have different tastes. I'm happy that Gavin and I are on the same page with this book. It was a disaster. I can't believe I'm saying that I'm going to commit to the fourth and final book. But like, I'm this deep in. Might as well. One more book. But anyway, I will leave a link down below in the description to Gavin's video. Go and check it out. He's one of my favorite creators on YouTube. So go give him a sub. Go give him some love and check out his content. We reached the end of the video. And while none of these books were a success for me, it's nice to know that my thoughts on these books do align with these booktube. Like we all pretty much felt the same way about these books and I almost feel like it would have been uncomfortable if I came out of one of these books being like, actually this is the best book ever, how dare you trash it. I really enjoyed the process of reading these books even though I'm not leaving this book with like a new favorite obviously. They were still easy reads and easy to get through, they just all had really frustrating plots or really frustrating characters. I'm gonna be linking the wonderful booktubers that were chosen for this video down below in the description. Go check out their channels, go subscribe to them, they're all lovely and you should check them out. I'm basically turning around and starting my next vlog where I read booktubers best books of 2023 so look forward to that. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. How do you like this vlog? Have you read any of these books? If so, what are your thoughts on them? If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! -o.